Hello and welcome to another edition of the Get Growing Weekly Work Session with Get Oiling. I'm Coach Ashley, joined today by founder of Get Oiling, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, everyone. Really glad to hear today. We also have Colin and Julie from our team. What's up, you guys? Hi, everyone. How you doing, everybody? We're really excited to have you here today where we are going to be discussing the page builder in Get Oiling. So today we're going to be talking about what it looks like to create custom website pages for all different kinds of use cases for your Young Living brand partner business or anything that you might offer adjacent uh, to your oily business. So we're looking forward to getting into this for uh, for you guys here today. If you're live, if you're interested in maybe working together on tweaking parts of your website, this is going to be a great opportunity for that. We are kind of uh, looking at this as a workshop today. So we'll go into some best practices and, uh, and then we will get into a fair amount of show and tell. So if you would like for that show and tell to be of your website, uh, then maybe pop that request into the Q&A and uh, we can make sure to take a look at that together as time permits today. Uh, so as always, this is a live call that we offer every Thursday at noon US Eastern time outside of holidays here in the US. And of course, uh, we are here for you as a brand partner. Whether you have gotten started with Get Oiling yet or not, I certainly hope you do. It's a dollar for your first month. We have everything that you need all under one roof to help you grow your brand partner business and to expand your personal brand so that you can attract more people to you so that you can share Young Living more easily with more people no matter where you are in the world. So without further ado, we are going to uh, get out of video, get into the slides that I've prepared for you today. And again, really look forward to uh, to chatting with you guys and getting into uh, design. So uh, let's go ahead and get into our slides. All right, so today we are talking page design 101. So we're getting into the basics. If you do have a request that's a bit more advanced, uh, you are still welcome to uh, hop into the Q&A and let us know. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about how you can get started with designing pages using Get Oiling. So today we have page design best practices. Uh, we will go into an overview as well, a live overview of the page builder. We will talk about how to use page templates and section templates. I'll show you where to find those to make your life a little easier. And then we'll talk about how we can integrate designs from Canva to make a more beautiful website, a functional one. And of course, I'll show you how Canva in some ways is integrated into Get Oiling. And then finally, we have our live help and Q&A, which is what this call is for. So if you're here today looking for help and support, go ahead and head into the Q&A and ask your questions if you have them as they come out throughout the call. And if you have other types of questions, you've got folks here to support you. This is an opportunity to get live feedback and hands-on help if you need it, or to just get your questions answered in real time. So feel free to pop those into the Q&A. We are here and ready to work with you. And of course, if you are watching this as a replay, Play. I hope that you'll come join us on an upcoming live call. That's getoiling.com slash weekly work session. If you'd like to get on the list to be notified for our upcoming sessions, and of course, to be able to join us live with your incredible community here. If you would like help on a live call like this one, you can actually schedule that time. So you can set aside dedicated space on a call just like this one to work on whatever you'd like. You can go to getoiling.com slash website review for that. And if you are learning about pages and setting them up and maintaining them for yourself, but you maybe like for somebody to do some of this work for you, that's an option as well. Getoiling.com slash concierge is where you're going to want to go to learn more about how you can have our team do work for you. So head into the chat. Let me know. Do you have a custom website? Do you have uh, your own sort of pages that tell your story? Maybe you sell services. Uh, maybe you offer classes, yoga classes, AFT sessions, things like that. What does that look like for you? And do you have a custom website? So with Get Oiling, you already have a ready-made sharing website ready to go out of the door on day one. All you got to do is put in your name, your member number when you sign up, and then maybe head over and add a photo and a little bit of your bio, a little bit of your backstory on, uh, on my story and photo. And there you have it. You pick the theme you want and it's done, right? It's compliant across many markets. You can choose based on the market that you're in. We are global uh, and you can use this for sharing Young Living uh, and, and of course getting people curious 
about what it looks like to start using product, right? But what if you want something a little bit more custom? What if you want something that is um, a little more you, right? Or maybe you're wanting to brand yourself or put your name out there. Maybe you want to start blogging or uh, offering a podcast or a YouTube channel, right? You want something that is your brand. Well, that is something that you can do with Get Oiling. At our basic and higher plans, you've got included our custom page builder. So before we get started, let's get into some basics of designing these pages, because I know that most of us who are brand partners did not set out on our journey to share Young Living and get oils into every home, thinking that we needed to become a website designer. I'm here to let you know that as it is set up in Get Oiling, the system that we have in place for you and what I'll share with you here today, you don't have to be a designer to do a really great job of this, to have something that looks good, and that functions well. So before we get into that, let's talk about some basics of getting your pages in place. So the first thing that you want to make sure that you've done is established your brand colors and fonts, right? And this is something that I highly encourage you to just get done and out of the way. This is not something that is going to have a significant bearing of weight on the outcomes of your website, right? This is really just something that allows you to put your personal stamp and flourish on what it is that you're sharing. What you're sharing is far more important than the style that you're giving it. So don't worry too, too much about this if it's a little uh, confusing for you. That We actually have lots of resources uh, to this end if you get hung up on this. Uh, we actually have a tech tips and trips training uh, where we have links to um, you know different palette creators and things like that. So. Definitely know that we have you covered if this is a place where you're getting stuck. So let's talk about some basics for colors and fonts. First, make sure that you aren't going too wild with your palette. Five to six colors is on the upper end of how many you really ought to be using on a website. And by colors you're using on a website, I am referring to maybe the colors of the fonts that you're using, um, the colors of background sections, buttons, elements, things like that, right? So we want to have five to six colors, again, on the upper end of the spectrum. We don't want to be visually overwhelming. It will detract from what we have to say, which is really what the website is about, is what we have to say. Similarly, we want two to three fonts, again, on the upper end. You can just use one and have it in bold and italic, et cetera, different sizes. But two to three maximum. Um, and then these are something that you're going to be using everywhere you show up, right? So I don't want you to just use these five to six colors, two to three fonts. I don't want you to just use them on your website. These are the things that should inform the social media posts that you're making or how you are setting up and branding yourself on social platforms, background images or cover photos. Uh, you know, if you're creating PDFs to give away as lead magnets, you should be using these colors, these fonts everywhere you show up uh, because these represent your brand. This is the stamp for you showing up out there in the world, right? So remember as well, and this is kind of to my original point that you shouldn't get too hung up on this and we definitely shouldn't go overboard with it. Our design elements, such as our colors, our fonts, these are things that complement our content. They are not our content, they complement it, right? So we wanna be more concerned with what we say than what it looks like, right? It needs to be legible, it needs to be clean, it needs to not be distracting. Uh, but the, the design element should be something that really helps to punctuate your point, not make a whole separate point itself, right? And to that end, less is always more. It is easily, it's very easy to get visually overwhelming uh, with design. And so always be editing yourself. Just be thinking about as you are putting things together that less is more, negative space is good, whether that be, uh, you know, dark or light, um, white or black, whatever, less is more. And once you've decided your colors and your fonts, do make sure that you have those added to the colors and fonts section in Get Oiling. We actually have a place for you to add this. If you're on a basic plan, you may consider upgrading to a branding package so that you can modify all of this to your liking. This will make it a lot easier for you to build out pages in other parts of your website moving forward. Now, getting into the actual creation of your page, Remember that every page on your website has a purpose and the vast majority of those pages have one purpose 
right? One purpose and should only have one call to action. And a call to action means I want somebody to do something on this page that's going to have a material benefit for my business, right? Or it's going to lead to a material benefit for my business, right? One of the only exceptions to this is going to be a home page. A home page is sort of like a lobby or a directory. You are going to have uh, fundamentally, you're going to have more information and links to different places from a home page. Uh, but every other page on your website should have a very clear call to action and purpose. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, the way that you can figure out what your page purpose is and therefore your call to action is to first ask yourself, what do you want this page to do for you? Right? Do I want this page to collect a lead so that I can speak with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, or, or so that I can send them a specific kind of information? Do I want this page to sell something? Do I want this page to explain something and then have them, of course, again, opt in, put their name and email in, sign up for a call with you, purchase something, go off to the Young Living site and buy something. What do you want the page to do? And what action specifically does a visitor need to take on this page for the page to achieve its purpose, right? So we want them to read content, click a button, go somewhere, read content, click a button, fill out a form, right? read what's there, book a call, right? What do we want them to do? What's the action that we want them to take for this page to fulfill its purpose? And uh, and do remember, again, this is the reason why we want to have really just one purpose and one call to action for basically every page on our website. The reason we do this, and this is proven, if you provide too many options, they will be more likely to take zero of them than one of them, right? We want to really help people narrow their focus down into taking a particular action. So always try to stick to one call to action on a page that you're creating. I put this in all caps because it's one of the most important things you need to know. <laughs> and this is uh, as much about design and uh, the visual elements you put onto a page uh, as it is about what you say. Less is more. We live in a highly distracted and distractible time. And people are often uh, engaging with your website from their mobile devices where they're getting all kinds of notifications all the time, right? And so we need to really punctuate. We need to get straight to the point, right? We need to let them know what's in it for them and why they should keep scrolling and reading. And we want to make sure that the scroll and read part of this is something that is fulfilling to them on uh, like an information gathering basis, right? We don't want a lot of fluff. We don't want a lot of extra. Um, and it needs to be to the point because again, their attention span, we are competing with attention spans that are under 30 seconds long. You can get very little done in terms of sharing information inside of 30 seconds, especially if you've got something that looks like a ton of words. So let's get into this. Designing your page on purpose to fulfill the purpose of a page that you're creating. First, of course, you got to be clear on the purpose of this page. And you've got to communicate the purpose of this page as it pertains to what's in it for the visitor and stick to that throughout, right? So what we call the top above the fold, the very top section of a page. It's the first thing that they see on any device. And it is going to determine whether or not they keep scrolling and reading or whether they take action on that page, right? So we have to be really clear, here's why you're here, here's what being here is gonna do for you, scroll through, click the button, whatever it is, and do the thing that you came here to do, right? Be clear with this, stick on purpose with this throughout. And then again, making sure that you are concise. Utilize write with AI and get oiling for this, right? If you feel like you're a little wordy, Take that block of copy and put it into write with AI and get oiling and ask it to make this a little more concise. Maybe ask it to give you three iterations of greater concision and then choose the one that you like best. So if you have a lot to say uh, and you know that you have to say all of it, it's okay to include a lot of content in a page. Just space it out with more sections. When I'm telling an about me story on a page, what I really like to do is take individual statements or maybe paragraphs and dedicate those to individual sections. It's better to have somebody read 500 words by scrolling and scrolling and scrolling than it is to expect them to land on 500 words and read the whole thing. Because if they see those 500 words, and, and this is 
no insult to anyone's intelligence, their brain goes, nope, too much work, I'm out, right? The vast majority of people. So we want to embrace the scroll if we have a lot to say, right? So negative space, meaning creating breathing room visually between the things that you're saying and then really allowing them to scroll through and let the story unfold. This is going to work far better for you than chunking out an entire paragraph, for instance, or especially a longer one into a section. And then we have features that we're gonna be looking at in a moment in our pages that allow you to draw the eye to where you want it to go, right? So you can make uh, the color of a font or the boldness, the weight of a font stand out so that something that you're saying really draws the eye to it. Or very importantly, if you're making a call to action, if you want someone to do the thing that you want them to do on this page to fulfill its purpose, we can use elements that draw the eye to that call to action. This is why you often see red buttons on pages where you are supposed to click a button and perform an action. The eye is drawn to that contrast and red has been proven, and there's been plenty of studies on this at this point, red has been proven to be something that people draw their eye to, right? So that high contrast button. So there's a lot that we can do to draw the eye to where we want someone to take action. Now, Let's talk real quickly about visual elements and how you can use Canva to get it done. Uh, I highly recommend if you do not have a, an account with Canva, there are free options that are really great. Uh, the paid option for Canva, if you are going to have your own brand and website as a business, uh, it is a very fair price, uh, far easier to use, simpler to use. Uh, than say like an Adobe suite that a, that a graphic designer would use and increasingly graphic designers are even using Canva because of its, its price efficiency uh, and how easily it plugs into so many different things. So highly recommend that you grab that if you don't already, this isn't sponsored. <laughs> we are no longer affiliates for Canva. They don't offer that uh, for anyone who's not just dedicated Canva people. So um, this is a, a, a real endorsement. All right. So Using uh, Canva with uh, with Get Oiling is going to work for you as follows. First, um, there are a couple of presets, and basically what this is is you can type in these words, and it will spit out a design size that will work in a particularly good way in different parts of your website. The two most important ones that I recommend that you file away in your mind are blog banner. So if you want to create a section background, a nice big section background image, high resolution, uh, that's going to show up really nicely on a desktop or a phone, et cetera. Blog banner is my favorite one to use for this. I'll be showing you how to use it shortly. And then logo is a preset and that's a 500 by 500 pixel square image that you can use to replace any of the square images that you find in uh, get oiling uh, templates, right? In uh, section templates, for instance. Now there are different features that Canva allows such as exporting an image with its background removed. So if you wanna have, uh, maybe you start with that logo, that square image, but what you're ultimately looking for is a circle with none of that square background behind it, you are gonna want to go into Canva um, on your app uh, or in the browser to be able to do that. Uh, at this point, uh, Canva integrations, which is what we have with Get Oiling, uh, don't allow uh, that feature. Right. So if you want something with a background removed, then you do want to uh, use the browser or the app. So for any other images, super simple, super easy. You can just use the built in Canva button in Get Oiling, which I'll be showing you how to use shortly. And don't forget, if you are using Canva, which, again, I highly recommend that you do once you've got your colors and your fonts established, put those into your brand kit in Canva and it will be super easy for you to create the images. Uh, and and logos and all of the stuff that you might want to use, not only on your website, but on your social media as well. And everything will be congruent across the board, everywhere that you're showing up. So let's go take a look at the page builder in Get Oiling. And uh, I will make a couple of quick pit stops as well to show you, uh, uh, to address a couple of the questions that have come up. So uh, first things first, under this website and blog menu, um, right over here under colors and fonts, this is where you're going to want to go and plug in the colors that you have selected. You can also plug in your fonts. If you want to add fonts to these lists, you can add custom fonts that you've purchased. Uh, you can also add fonts easily from Google. 
Google fonts uh, are, are plugged in immediately to your website. They're already available for you when you get started. Uh, that is a really great place to start. If you are just kind of dipping your toe in the water with a personal brand, you don't have to go out and purchase a custom font. Uh, you can simply use Google fonts, right? So the idea here is that we want to maybe have for a headline, something that's a little bit bolder. And then for a body text, something that is very, both of them very easily legible, but the, uh, the body text would be something that isn't quite as hard on the eyes as something that is as high contrast as this. Something like this is going to tire the eye, <clears throat> right? So it's, it's large, it's bold, uh, the font. We want something that really uh, allows uh, the eye to work a little, uh, little faster, a little smoother, a little easier through, uh, through reading. And then finally, you can set up your button colors here as well. All you have to do is click them and then you can go and, and uh, insert the color that you want. You can do, <clears throat> excuse me, you can use hex codes. Uh, you can slide to select, uh, totally up to you. And we have additional trainings on these as well. Uh, there was a question here about uh, where you go to uh, ju to just use the built-in uh, pages, the, uh, the themes that are included with your Get Oiling account. That's going to be right here under Customize My Site. And this is where you can actually choose. I would like my home page to be. And this one actually, this, this account has many pages. Uh, but you can actually see in here when you get started, uh, there will be a number of different options available to you. All of them, uh, again, if you are... Uh, just getting started with us. Here's our built-in website themes. All of these are going to be available to you based on the, um, the market that you select, right? So here in the US, we've got quite a few and you can pick any of those that you like. All right, so let's get over to our pages. I'm gonna click right here under website and blog. We've got pages. And I'm gonna go create a new one. So I mentioned, I was gonna show you guys where you can go to find templates. Uh, we actually have a good number of them. These are all homepage templates. We've got about page templates. Uh, we've got link pages. This would be a, um, a substitute, for instance, uh, for your, um, uh, like a link tree. You don't need link tree if you have Get Oiling. Uh, if you want a sales page, uh, you could even start from something blank. We've got registration pages, thank you pages, services pages, uh, link pages for favorites. Uh, if you want to point off to your favorite um, Young Living uh, bundles, right? You can link those on these. We've got trainings on those, uh, terms and conditions, all kinds of great full page templates. I'm gonna go start from a blank page and show you how uh, you can also use section templates to build out a page based on what you want. So starting here, I'm going to um, I think I'm going to use a two column section for the top and I'm going to have an image on the right. Maybe after that, I want to have a sort of like a, a bold statement that I'll put here. And then maybe beneath that, I want a three column section where I'm going to say some things, maybe these check boxes. I like this idea here. I'm gonna talk about what they get. I'm going to maybe also add a larger section here where I can say a bit more in a single paragraph, right? Um, and let's get a um, let's get a consensus here. Here in the chat, let me know um, what purpose do we want to fulfill in a page? And we can start from there. Um, maybe name a page that you are working on uh, and we can kind of walk through how we might set something up like that. And I'll take you through the steps. So I've just shown you how to um, add sections to a page, right? That's um, oops, that's right here with this little plus section. Uh, you can also copy in content from another page. So if you're wanting to utilize uh, maybe some sections that exist on another page that you've created or imported into your system via a resource bundle, uh, you can add those in here easily as well. So if maybe, for instance, on all of the pages uh, on your website, you want to have a particular section that shows up at the bottom uh, that's separate from a footer, uh, then, of course, you can use that copy in page feature here uh, to do that. Now, let's talk about how we can modify these sections to our liking. So we are in um, our content editor right here. We have two other types here. We have element style editor, and then we have a column editor as well. And then these up here are the preview buttons, right? So if you want to see what this is going to look like on a phone, then you can actually see that here. 
and this has a built-in, I have my um, custom footer uh, included here. So show footer, default footer is there. That's why you're seeing that and not on this page. Um, so you can see what it'll look like on phone. You can see what it'll look like on a tablet. And then finally, what it will look like on a desktop. So you can see that this is actually just the way that this is showing up immediately. Um, it's all a little bit kind of tight. It's very close together, right? Do you, do you see how this is a little bit visually overwhelming? We need more negative space. And so what that negative space is uh, here in this, um, in this, uh, this page builder is something that's called padding. And padding is something that you can add into your sections or into different elements. Um, but the way that we're gonna focus on this is by clicking this little pencil, this is our section settings, and you can do this for each of your individual sections. I'm going to come down here and add some padding to the top. So you see how this is kind of scooting downward? So I'm gonna add some padding to the top and I'm gonna add it to the bottom as well, roughly the same, uh, about the same amount of padding. And you can actually see when we go to preview how much different that looks. So there's more space here than there was before. And there's more space here. This looks a little bit more visually balanced. This one as well definitely looks like it could use some padding and maybe even shrinking the size of this text here because it's just a little bit big. It's competing with the main thing that we're seeing up here. So again, same thing. We can come over here and increase our padding on the top, increase it on the bottom, and you can do that in any of the sections. So padding, just remember padding is your friend, right? You can create some visual breathing room. Now let's talk about how we can edit the actual content. Here you can see when you hover over, you can select different parts of a section, right? If I only want to swap the image or maybe I want to play around with the whole thing, I can select the whole thing, right? So we're hovering over you see how these are all different elements that we're highlighting. So definitely be mindful as you're making changes, what it is that you're highlighting, right? Uh, so that you are super clear on what that is. So I'm actually going to start with this section here. And this is where I can add, you know, really anything that I'd like. I can, I can change my button color here uh, by going over to the styles and maybe changing that out. I can say what I wanna say. This is the above the fold section that we were talking about. And, uh, and again, as we're making those, those edits, uh, we can of course go up and preview what this looks like. If you are in a position where, for instance, in this section, we like the way that it looks on the desktop, but we don't love the way that it looks on mobile, then we might maybe make a duplicate of that section and make it invisible on desktop. I'll make that top one invisible on mobile. And then we can make some changes here. So one of the things that I didn't like about how uh, this showed up on mobile, uh, and this is the original, is that there's no space between these two really. And I want this to be centered. So, but I don't want that on the desktop version. So I can actually go in here, select this text and center it. And then I can, Come down here and I'm just gonna hit enter a couple of times just to cre create a little bit of space there. And then we can go and look and see that there is more space there. It looks a little nicer, right? So this is going to work a lot better on mobile. So you can also in your editor uh, kind of make these changes as you're going uh, to make sure that they are looking good on all the devices that you are showing up on, right? Okay, so uh, Donna says uh, that she's got a wellness coaching offer. Uh, you wanna create a page for your three month package. Awesome, okay. Uh, so tell you what, Donna, I'm gonna bring you out here uh, shortly and uh, and we can kind of talk through some of this together, but I wanna make sure that we're, we're going through just a couple of the, the basics here before we move into that. If you would like to create a color background for a section, what you can do here is uh, is actually select the background settings and then your color palette is automatically going to show up. If you wanna use something high contrast here, you are gonna to wanna to make sure that you are modifying the color of your text to match. So I'm gonna select that content there, change that to white so that it looks a little nicer. And this image, I don't love this image. See, this isn't a good case for having a background removed. Now, if you have an image that you've already created with the background removed, you can go ahead and select the image, click replace, and then you can 
uh, actually add it from your device or if you've already uploaded it into your system, such as this one here, which actually doesn't have a background removed. Let's see if we can find another one. Uh, and I'll show you how to go into Canva and set that up here shortly. So here we go. Here is uh, an example. This is a, an image with a, um, a background removed, right? Uh, so this is showing up here nicely. And, uh, and and so this now looks good. Now, what if I don't want the white text? What if I want like just a nice white background uh, behind everything? So I'm gonna actually turn this text back to what it was before. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my element style editor and I'm gonna select this whole section and I'm going to increase the background opacity. So now you can actually see all of it a little better or you could even you know, select, um, I'm gonna move that back to where it was. Maybe I just want to uh, edit the, the box that, the, that this text is in. I could do that as well uh, and increase the opacity on that. Of course, when I do, what do we need to do? You see how tight all of that is? We could actually include additional padding here on the top and bottom, left and right, et cetera, right? So you can actually set this up this way as well. Now, what if we want to have an image background? So perhaps I want to do that here in this section. I'm going to click here on this pencil. I'm going to go to a change background image. I can select something that I may already have, or I can click this add design from Canva button. And this is where, remember, we're using a section background. So we're going to go, excuse me, find blog banner. There it is. It may ask you to allow cookies. And there you go. You now have Canva plugged into your Get Oiling. And so here, what we can do is just simply search elements, maybe images uh, for the background that you're looking for. Uh, so I'm going to maybe type in forest. And mm, let's go see. I think I like this one. Awesome. I'm going to set this image as a background. Now, I don't know if this is a premium image or not. If it is, if you have any issues with doing what I'm showing you right now and sending this straight to get oiling, there is a thing that Canva has been doing recently where it is um, not allowing you to export a file that only has one premium image in it. You need to add other elements to it. So the way that I work around this is I just go over here to elements and then I'll just grab, I don't know, like here's a circle, right? And in terms of layering, I'm going to send that to the back and then I'm going to uh, attach, I'm just gonna stretch this out to cover the entire image. Right, so now there are there's technically more than just this image here, right? And it will allow you to export successfully. Just make sure that you have actually stretched it to cover the entirety uh, of that background. So I'm gonna send that to Get Oiling and it looks like we're good to go. All right, so it's gonna take a moment as a fairly large image uh, it's going to upload it into uh, your website content, into your photos. And now that it's in this list, I can just click plus, and it is now the background. Now, you notice that we can't really see all of this here. And if we actually go and look at this on different devices, we can see that we can't see the trees there, can't see them there, but we can see them here. So this is going to be a case for potentially making a duplicate section and uh, and, and having it look a little bit different on mobile if this is a section where you want to include text. I actually just want this to be a nice uh, space where we are, um, we're just taking a break from words and just adding a design element here. So I'm just gonna delete the text that's here. It did just shrink this section down considerably. Um, here, let me actually edit this and uh, this section and add some padding to the top and bottom. So I'm gonna go and make this a nice wide section. So 100, 116, 116. And I'm gonna use this feature called Parallax Background. Now, when we go and we scroll down the page, we've got an interactive feature here. We're scrolling over that image. And if we don't like how it looks here, 
Uh, we can also go into our settings here and maybe start, I'm gonna center. Um, let's see, and I'm going to center this uh, right here in the middle, right? You can see how it's actually moving. And this is going to impact the parallax function and sort of what they see first, right? So uh, we have a lot of different options here. You can also make it a little larger, you can tool around with it, see what it looks like on the different devices, right? And you could use that parallax feature for mobile, desktop, and you could use it for larger backgrounds as well. Just make sure that where you have an image like this one that has high contrast, meaning here's a very dark color and here's a very light color, you may want to use this trick that I showed you up here where you're selecting the text and you're giving that element an opaque background, right? So that's this element style editor and I'm increasing the opacity of that background. So that way, regardless of whether or not you're on mobile or where the parallax function might be when they're scrolling, they'll be able to read the words. Because remember, everything that's not the words on your website is something that is supposed to make the words work better, right? So just make sure that what you're putting here is not detracting uh, from what it is that you have to say. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the column editor, or actually, you know what, real quickly, let me show you if you want to uh, export something with a transparent background from Canva. Let me just go ahead and show you how I do that. You do need to go into Canva itself. I'm doing this in a browser. Uh, I'm gonna create a design and this is going to be a logo because that's that square one and that's going to nicely replace a lot of different types of images that I might have on the site. Um, what I will do here is um, I will add an element. I'm going to use a frame element. So let's just say we want to drag a picture into here and crop it into a circle. That's what these frames would be for. So I'm going to stretch this frame out to fill the entire image. And then I'm going to go into elements and let's just pretend that this is in your uploads. And maybe it's a photo of you, right? Uh, so I'm going to find a, uh, a woman smiling just for, for purposes here uh, of expediency. Um, all right, here we go. We'll just drag her right into here. And I don't like how she's so far off to the right. So I'm gonna double click this and drag it over to the middle. Pretty good. All right, so now I'm gonna go to share and I'm going to download this. PNG is suggested and it's correct. This is an image, transparent background and then download. Ah, now see, this is another one. This is a premium image. Uh, can't be exported on their own. Add more elements and try again. No problem, Canva. I can add another element. And i uh, going to do just what I did before. Add a shape. And I'm going to layer that by sending it backward. And I'm going to put her right back over the top. Voila. Again, download, transparent background. It's not gonna give you this issue if it's your, a picture of you, right? It's just their um, their premium stock photos uh, are what they uh, don't want you to export on their own, right? So let's just say right here, oops, need to get into my content editor here. I'm gonna select this guy, swap him out and select from my device, which should be, there it is. And it might take a moment and then we're good to go. Right, and you can actually see how this is um, effectively uh, set up as a transparent background when we put it onto a colored background, right? You can actually see that it sits right over the top. All right, now um, again, if we want to maybe add a color, here's our background color here. Maybe I wanna change the background color of this template to this one. You can absolutely do that. You can add gradients here. Be really mindful about your palette, making sure that you are creating anything too visually overwhelming. I would encourage you where you have something that has a really striking, strong design element, such as a bold color background or a bold background image, um, or, or something that is in significant contrast to the section above or below it, 
I would really recommend that you give some breathing space between. So like, I wouldn't put a gradient color background on a section like this right next to this one. I would actually err on the side of using a white background for this section. I'm gonna remove the gradient. Um, using a white background for this section and then maybe for these individual ones, giving them background colors. Oops, that's the whole section, sorry. So I'm gonna go back and fix that. No background color. I'm gonna go into my element style editor and then I'm gonna select these entire blocks and give them color, right? And then I can go in and uh, and swap out the text color, right? So that way, again, like we're we're creating a circumstance here where as we're scrolling, right? And even this one, this is a great example. I, I don't love the blue right next to this. Um, it would be nicer to maybe pick the color here and have that be the background of this section and then have the blue pop out down here. Does that make sense? So the way that I would do that, and this is actually really cool, uh, if we go over here to our background color, uh, we can click here. And depending on the device that you're on, I am on a Mac, I have an eyedropper here and I can actually add it right here. And you can see that color is changed, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and change this one to that same color because this is our mobile section, right? And so now you've got something, again, it's not visually distracting. So here it's very similar, right? It's in keeping, we got the green here, we got the brand, the sort of tan that's here. Do you see how all of this is, is sort of working together well visually? Now, in this case, I would change my call to action button to not be green because I wanna draw the eye to it. I would use a color from the palette that's higher in saturation uh, or closer to like a red, right? Something that's higher contrast that stands out more because we want the eye to be drawn. Uh, we wanna engage that little part of the, the toddler brain <laughs> that says I wanna push the buttons uh, and, uh, and, and give them, um, give that part of the brain a reason to go and explore that. All right, so I'm curious to see if you guys, ha guys have any questions uh, about how this works up to this point. Uh, you can, of course, uh, add as many of these sections as you'd like. We have interactive sections where you can add things like carousels, countdown timers, accordions. The sky's the limit with this stuff in terms of how far into it you go. Uh, but it's just really important to remember that less is more. If you have a lot to say, break it up, right? So if you've got a paragraph, begin the paragraph, but then maybe break up at another section that's like a two column section where you can have an image on one side and you're continuing what it is that you're saying. And maybe the image is evocative of what you're talking about. And then you want to say something that kind of punctuates. Uh, you want to like have a, a singular statement that you say. So in this case, we could go to a um, like a header. You could insert a header here, right? Uh, where you would make a like a bold statement, right? And, and then everything changed, right? We're drawing the eye down and then you continue telling the story, right? All right, I'm gonna bring you out to chat here, Donna, and uh, maybe we can look through uh, what you are working on together. Hi. Hi, Ashley, thank you. Yeah, of course. So, so what is, um, what, what's the website on your account just so I can find you? Okay, so I have lots of different pages, but the domain is DonnaMarie21.com. Okay. There we go, found you. Okay, so the page that you're working on, I think you mentioned was a, a wellness coaching offer. Right, so the thing is, I, I'm going to use as a template one of the pages that's already completed. I have one that's called a gut health audit. And that particular page is just kind of a, a version of many that look like that. But I want to change that into um, a new sales page for my three-month package that I've already started selling. Okay. But there's a lot more information here than what would be on that page. So I just need to make like a an easy page. But I'm like, okay, I'll look at this. This is what I kind of use for my audit program. How can I turn this into like a great sales page without all of this additional stuff? Because a lot of that stuff doesn't need to be there. Yeah, I got you. So the first question where you're creating a sales page is going to be, 
how they arrive there. So is someone going to this sales page after they've had a qualifying conversation with you? Or is this a page that's available for anybody to arrive at and purchase this package? 99.9% .9 of the time they've had a conversation with me. Okay. That's really good news for you because you can make it really simple for that reason. Yeah. You don't need to have a super involved uh, sales page. Mm -hmm. um, if you are qualifying them and explaining the offer to them on a call, um, really all the page, like, so the purpose of this page, uh, like we've discussed purpose already today, the purpose of this page is going to be to collect payment. Uh, that's the, the, the number one material thing it does for your business. Uh, mm -hmm. And then what it does for them uh, is to reiterate what they're getting, right? right? Reiterate what they're getting and and then get them access to what they want. Uh, so for something like that, um, what I, I would do- I'm sorry, Ashley, if you could check in my thing, they're actually, because now that I'm looking at that, that's the page that they actually get after they purchase. I think there might be a, yeah, the sign up page. Try oh, that. Oh, okay. I don't know. That's still a different one, but that's actually another sample of a sales page that I sometimes use after like a workshop or something. Got you. Yeah. No. And that's good, right? If you're sending someone here. So basically when you don't use like, so this would be a, a long form sales page and a long form sales page is great to use when you aren't present. It's kind of doing the job of you, yeah. uh, on a, in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, let's see. See if we can narrow this down just a little bit. Um, is it any of these? Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess I don't. I thought I had it. Yeah, sometimes I guess I don't have a smaller page. And that's kind of what I need. Because like for the three-month package, it's always going to be after a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. And I want them to go there, click that button that takes them to my payment portal without having to read, you know, a newspaper. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, is the program that you're offering, is it taking place inside of a vault? No. Okay. Okay. So uh, is it going to be a package of calls? Yes. Perfect. Do you want them to go ahead and book their first session while they're making their payment? I watched you two weeks ago when you talked about that. I'm still considering that right now. I just have them, once they pay, they send me an email and then I look at my calendar and then I, with the emails, I book the sessions because my schedule is insane. Got you. Okay. So, uh, so I'm starting from a blank page and what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I'm going to use a two column, no header. Uh, and then I will put the, uh, I'm going to put gut health uh, program, you can obviously change this to your liking. I'm going to change the paragraph settings here uh, so that it's nice and big. And then over here, I'm going to replace this uh, with the form. Now, what I'm going to do here is in settings, under leads, I'm going to select the lead capture form shows up on the page. And then we also need to go ahead and make sure that you have a payment processor connected, which you don't currently. So you will want to make sure that you do that so that you can collect payment on this page. Right. So um, so this is where they're just going to say, like, they're going to arrive here, they're going to see the name of it, and they're going to see a form. So the way that this looks right now, this would obviously also have the purchase information, right? right? Uh, so put in your credit card information, et cetera. Um, you do have the option here um, after we have this heading, uh, to maybe just say, uh, you know, put in the details, right? So um, we'll say uh, you'll get uh, this and this and this and this, right? And this is where you're actually just reiterating what you've probably already told to them. Uh, and then the form is going to be right there for them to take payment. Um, it I really remember. can be literally this simple. Right. Because this is they've already spoken with you. You've gone over what is going to be included. Um, you could alternately also have a maybe a, a single column section here where this is where we're going to uh, reiterate what happens uh, after they sign up. Uh, goals of program, et cetera. Right. Really, really, really very simple. Um, because like when when you're on a call with somebody and they've given you a yes, 
you don't want to give them more brain homework. You want to take right. them straight to where they need to do one thing. So if they just need a quick reminder, here are the things you get. Here's, uh, you know, here's what's going to happen after you complete payment on this page. Head over here now and complete payment. And then you just want to make sure that under the lead section here uh, that you say, uh, let's get started. You can change your button color here. Uh, maybe I'm going to use this purple one uh, and we'll, uh, we actually don't need to put anything here because we actually have it on the page already. Uh, if you want to ask more questions, if you want to include a booking here, you can do that as well. Uh, and then finally, what you want to make sure that you're doing, because you are going to be taking payment ultimately on this page, uh, is this is going to be, you know, the, the gut health client, maybe so this is after they've paid, that's a gut health client. And you want to have some kind of a campaign here that's that can, that confirms that they've opted in and tells them what to do next. And then this here, is, a simple confirmation page would work here as well. This is great because I've never seen this before, and particularly where the whole form thing is. Because mm. what what I'm doing now, like what my process is, is I send them to a page where they sign up. That then I have a button there that sends them to my payment portal. Then the payment portal sends them back to a landing page so that I could get the tag. And oh, then no, the tag sends them <laughs> to another confirmation page with the campaign connected. I mean, like I have this long process. I didn't even know you could do this. I need oh, you to no, ma'am. where that <laughs> no, <form> no. Is. <laughs> So this is your uh, this is what you're gonna send. This is um gut health program confirmation, uh, obviously change this. Uh, you'll, you'll be changing the settings for this. I, I'm, I'm just basically I'm putting in placeholders for you to go back and edit. Uh, so the message here. Oh, hey, she's back. She is. Hi. <laughs> we had it. We just had a, like just a power blip and it just took everything offline here. Apologies for that. Okay. So let's see, we are sharing. Perfect. Okay. Um, so where we were, uh, was we've created a very simple page. Uh, this page uh, we're going to call uh, Gut Health Program Sign Up. Uh, again, be sure to change these, especially these two, because they're going to see them, right? Um, and uh, and then yeah, make sure that here, if you want to have them book their first call, uh, right here, you can include this for now. You mentioned your schedule is kind of crazy. Uh, in that case, uh, in this campaign that we're attaching. Uh, we want to give them uh, a specific call to action. So that's where uh, this message is what's going to go out um, after they purchase. Uh, it's going to be connected right here. So that's this gut health program confirmation. Uh, this is going to say uh, confirmed. Um, do this next, right? Obviously, again, change this. Um, and this is where you can include uh, maybe a link to agreement, uh, link to schedule, et cetera, welcome and all that, right? So you put your, uh, everything that you wanna to say to them after they purchased in this message. And then here on this page, that's going to be, here we go, gut health program confirmation. And when you change the name, it will update that, uh, the name of this okay. campaign, it'll update here as well. And then I don't know if this confirmation page specifically is going to be fitting for what you're doing, yeah, so you'll want to maybe create a different version of this that uh, confirms that they have, um, that they've signed yeah. up for the program. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and so then, uh, and then you can ultimately test it out. You do want to make sure that you have your payments set up. Um, and and so what you'll see here uh, is they will, you know, here's the information that you're sharing. Have name, email, phone if you want to use it. If you want to ask additional questions. Um, if you want this to be an intake form, you can do that as well. Uh, and then uh, the payment form will show up here as well once you have actually attached um, a payment processor. Uh, and of course, uh, once you have um, set up payments on this page, which is all available right here under settings. One final thing that I would note uh, is because we want them to have no other options here on this page, I'm going to not show the header or footer. And that's, this is only going to be available to people that you've spoken with directly. So we're going to make this uh, by link only. And, uh, and you don't really have to worry about search engine stuff because that's why we're making it available by link only. So yeah, from, from this point forward, this is like what you would do. Um, if you wanted to 
uh, get a little bit more dialed in and you want to say more right here, you can break these up into different sections. You could actually just come down here and put the form here instead of here. Um, you know, th those are certainly options as well. Okay, this is this is great. Um, and you're saving this in my account, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of this is saved in your account and okay. you'll be able to go back and, and modify these to your liking, yeah. Yeah. Now for payment, because I know I saw on Get Oily, there's an option for payment. So I use Square. And the way I use it right now is I always have a button that takes them away from my site to Square. Mm -hmm. And then I have Square then forward them back to, uh, you know, what's now a landing page, then to a confirmation page and all of that. But you're right. saying I can integrate Square directly into here? So you would actually set up with Stripe, which is similar. Uh, and 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 you would set the payment up inside of Get Oiling, and everything that happens post payment is all set up on that page. You don't; they okay. don't need to leave anywhere. No, none of that back and forth. They're tagged in your system. They're in your system, and you could do all kinds of automated things. Uh, like to to this extent, there's so much more you can do. But yeah, the basics would be connect Stripe here, set up a payment option on that page, and then literally all they have to do is fill out that page, including their payment information. And, and then that campaign, that message that goes out that's attached. Uh, so that's this, um, this one here, this gut health program confirmation. Um, mm -hmm. You could put whatever you want in here, right? This, this can, uh, you can link things. You can tell them to do something, you know, all, all kinds of stuff uh, that you can that's do great. for you. Okay, this is great. I can't wait to get the replay because I have to study this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, what this is, this is basically just a simple payment funnel. So you're, you're setting up your page uh, with a payment uh, and thankfully you don't have to get super far into design for this. The function of this is something that is uh, really just supporting what you're already doing in your business. And I think, and I'm really glad that you came out with this question here today, because I think that a lot of us, uh, you know, which is the vast majority of us who did not get into any of this as designers uh, of any kind, <laughs> right. um, we, we like to think that like, it has to be so much more complex. Uh, than it really needs to be. And in your case, you really can and should, I think, use something uh, that's very simple and straightforward. You don't have to get super designy with this. It would actually work against you because what you really want is for them to just go there and do the thing after the thing that you just did. Uh, exactly. And so it works for you. Okay. This has been great. Thank you so much. I really, really um, appreciate your help on this. This is wonderful. I'm so glad I jumped on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming out. All right. Um, thank you guys uh, for sticking around and sorry for the uh, the little hiccup there. Uh, we'll do everything we can to kind of stitch these uh, recording pieces together uh, here and get that out for the replay. Uh, we certainly welcome you if you want to work on a particular part of your website, a page that you are working on. Uh, maybe you're trying to get things mobile responsive, but we do have trainings on that. We have trainings on all of these things. Uh, or if you have something uh, like uh, Donna, which was really like needlessly complex. You don't even know. You could have it so simple inside of Get Oiling, especially if you're taking payment for something. You can just tighten all of that up into one place. Uh, we've got you covered there. So we look forward to uh, seeing you soon. By the way, uh, I know there's not a lot of us here right now, but if you're watching the replay, um, next week is Thanksgiving in the US. So we will not um, be here live. Uh, we will be sending out a replay though. So be on the lookout uh, or a, a pre-recorded training. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And I uh, look forward to seeing you guys in two weeks. Take care, everybody.